Support for WYES is made possible by Mary Lou Kristovich in memory of her husband, William Kristovich. Peggy Scott Laborde and welcome to Steppin' Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. Seated at our table tonight, Poppy Tooker, host of the WWNO program, the radio program, Louisiana Eats. Good to see you. Hi, Peg. Hello. He's back, Max Williams, artistic director, Le Petit Theater, here to discuss their brand new production of Glass Menagerie. And opening this weekend, yay. Yes, yes. <laughs> Wonderful, congratulations. Thank you. And of course, we uh, later on, by the way, have a scene from the production to share, so that'll be great. And then we also have Stephen Out Theater critic Alan Smason, who is the editor of the Crescent City Jewish News. Good to see you. First up, Puppy. Incredible opportunity next Friday night. There's a benefit for the Southern Food and Beverage Museum's Rosette Roshan House. Now, this is a very special building that was donated to them. It was the home of a free woman of color who was quite amazing. It's going to be used as an artist residence and all sorts of various things, but it needs to be renovated. So next Friday night at the home of Tom Regan on Governor Nichols. Tom Regan, who is one of the most amazing wine collectors in the city, they're having a dinner. It's limited to only eight people. There's a couple of spots left. It's $500 a person. It's worth $500 a person for the wines that he's going to be pouring that night alone. Now, it's a seven course dinner that's gonna be prepared by Nina Compton, of course, at Compare Le Pain. Seven courses, beginning with local oysters and caviar and a 1996 Grand Cru Champagne. Ooh. Then there's Hamachi Tartare with a Grand Cru Chablis. There's Foie Gras Royale with Blood Orange Jelly <laughs> and a Chateau Ikem. Short rib tortellini with a Cote Roti La Mouline, grouper with potato pearls and caviar, and it's all premier Grand Cruz. There's a sirloin with a an haute brion, something incredible over my head. There's an intermezzo, chocolate boudini with Louisiana strawberries, and a 2000 Fonseca vintage port, and a 2000 Trimbach Gewurztraminer. They're really singing my song. But anyway, <laughs> this is a fabulous thing. And just go to the Southern Food and Beverage Museum to find out more about it. Then, Dis and Dem has some big news. They have a new location in the French Quarter. It's inside of the Rue St. Louis Bar and Music Club, hmm. which is at 817 St. Louis. That's 120 feet off of Bourbon Street. There's no sign on the outside, so you have to look for Skip with the rooster on the balcony. Um, this is Skip Murray and Lawrence Turk, his British partner, and the owner-operators at this location are Kiss Valella and Michael Petito. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. until 2 a.m. They're delivering throughout the French mm. Quarter. Good news for you, Max. <laughs> and they're going to ev eventually expand their delivery. Then on Bank Street, there's also big news because they're closing banks oh. on March the mm -hmm. 25th just so that they can move across the street mm -hmm. to a new location, doubling their capacity. They're doing a renovation. It'll be open in July. Oh, good news. Then last Friday night, I got to do one of the most enviable things that everybody's wanting to do in town, and that's go to N7 on Montague Street off of St. Claude Avenue. Now, that's yeah. what's across the street from this restaurant. This is totally a hidden place, so it's a little sketchy, but it, I felt perfectly safe and it was fine. That that's what you're looking for, is the N7 <laughs> sign with the light, okay? Uh, N7 is the highway that carries Parisian south for summer holidays, so that's the name. Oh. Now, those are the owners, and they are the team that's behind Yuki Izakaya that we've talked about before on Frenchman Street. And Yuki is the wife, that's their 10-month-old baby. This is like stepping into the movie of a French cafe, and that's no co coincidence since Yuki's husband works in the movie industry. It is 
fabulous, okay? So they have French classics like Coco Vin with, the, and then there you can see Yuki's influence in avocado and radish salad with wasabi dressing, white truffle and porcini mushroom pate. Mm. But the big deal there are hard to find canned goods that they sent tinned, like they say in Europe. They send it to you in the tin. Those are baby eels. But they do also have calamari, mussels, smoked sardines. There's wine, beer, and sake. It is really a wow. special experience. an adventure. You kind of feel like you've stepped into the 22nd century, where <laughs> okay. there's nothing left but canned food. Cause some, <laughs> but, but it's fabulous. <laughs> Thank you, Poppy. <laughs> and we turn to Max. And Max, I know that Tennessee Williams is very dear to your heart. Uh, certainly, as I think he is to many, many um, New Orleanians. But uh, before I came down here about a year ago, I'd, I'd worked on a lot of From Tennessee Hartford plays Stage. over a lot, of, a lot of years at Hartford Stage and elsewhere. And uh, this company that we've assembled to do the glass menagerie is just a dream come true for me. Well, for first time uh, Tennessee Williams fans, if you will, that's that's the show to watch, and not just not streetcar necessarily, but this one. It was his first uh, big hit, if you will, his first that gained a kind of wide acceptance. He'd had one play before this that closed in Boston called Battle of Angels, but the Glass Menagerie, really, from the time it opened first in Chicago and then, of course, on Broadway, it just captured the imagination of of the theater going public, really here and all over the world. Um, so. In commemoration, of course, of the 30th anniversary of the Tennessee Williams Festival, which is happening, as you well know, uh, <laughs> in a couple soon. of weeks. Yes, um, March 30th, we just thought April that, 3rd. Uh, yes, exactly, and we'll be playing that weekend as well. Okay. Um, the Glass Menagerie was the play that that we wanted. Well, to, we're looking to forward to and seeing. It. And speaking of seeing it, actually, we're so fortunate because we have an excerpt tonight from the very production of Glass Menagerie. And let me just, of course, acknowledge Anna Lee Jeffries. Curtis Billings and Lucy Faust in a scene from Glass Menagerie. So, tell me some more things about this. What do you call him? James D. O'Connor. The D is for Delaney. Irish on both sides, gracious, and doesn't drink? Would you like me to call him up and ask him right this minute? The only minute? way to find out about those things is to make discreet inquiries at the proper moment. When I was a girl in Blue Mountain and it was suspected that a young man drank, the girl whose attentions he'd been receiving, if any girl was, would sometimes speak to the minister of his church, or rather her father would if he was living, and sort of feel him out on the young man's character. That is the way such things are discreetly handled, so... A girl doesn't make a tragic mistake. Then how did you happen to make a tragic mistake? Mm, that innocent look of your father's had everyone fooled. He smiled. The world was enchanted. No girl can do worse than put herself at the mercy of a handsome appearance. I hope that Mr. O'Connor is not too good looking. Not too good looking. He's covered in freckles and hasn't much of a nose. He's not right down homely, though. Well, not right down homely. Just medium homely, I'd say. Character's what to look for in a man. That's what I've always said, Mother. Oh, you've never said anything of the kind, and I suspect you'd never give it a thought. Well, don't be so suspicious of me. At least I hope he's the type that's up and coming. Yeah, I think he really goes in for self-improvement. What reason have you to think so? He goes to night school. <gasps> Splendid. What does he do? I mean, study. Radio engineering and public speaking. Then he has visions of becoming advanced in the world. Any young man who studies public speaking is hoping for an executive job someday in radio engineering, a thing for the future. Both these things are very illuminating. These are the kinds of things a mother should know concerning any young man who comes to call on a daughter seriously or not. One little warning. He doesn't know about Laura. I didn't let on that we had dark ulterior motives. I just said, why don't you come have dinner with us? He said, okay, and that was a whole conversation. I bet it was. You're eloquent as an oyster. However, when he, when he gets here, he'll know about Laura. And when he sees how sweet and pretty and lovely she is, he'll thank his lucky stars he was asked to dinner. Mother, you mustn't expect too much of Laura. What do you mean? Laura seems all those things to you and me because she's ours and we love her. And we don't even notice she's crippled anymore. Don't say crippled. You know I never allow that word to be used. Well, but face the facts, Mother. She is. 
And that's not all. What do you mean, not all? Laura is very different from other girls. I think the difference is all to her advantage. Well, not quite all. In the eyes of others, strangers, she's terribly shy and lives in a world of her own, and those things make her seem a little peculiar Don't to people say outside peculiar. of the house. Peculiar? We'll face the facts. She is. In what way peculiar, she, may I ask? She lives in a world of her own. A world of little glass ornaments, Mother. She plays old phonograph records, and that's about all. Where are you going? I'm going to the movies. Not to the movies. Every night to the movies. I don't believe you always go to the movies. Laura, Laura. Yes, Mother? Come in front, let those dishes go. Come here, Laura, and make a wish on the moon. Moon? A little <laughs> silver slipper of the moon. Look over your left shoulder and, and make a wish. Now, now, darling, wish. What shall I wish for, Mother? Happiness. Good fortune. And once again, The Glass Menagerie runs through April the 3rd at Le Petit Theatre. Call the box office or visit their website to purchase tickets. Really excited about this. Congratulations, Max. Thank hey. you, Peggy. Thank you. And now it's time for our Artist Spotlight. Tonight we are spotlighting the paintings of nostalgic folk artist Sherry Dooley. This is Royal Stroll. And we also have Sponge Roller. <laughs> Dooley paints with acrylic on wood, preferring resalvaged materials. And we've also got, this is damn cake, let them eat pie. <laughs> she may be found uh, at Jackson Square on weekdays, weather permitting, and may also be contacted at Sherry at SherryDooley.com. More of her work may also be seen online at SherryDooley.com. And the Tuscan Sansa Polcro flag wavers have been in town this week and visited our studio. Here's WYS's Tom Gregory with Frank Maselli, head of the Italian American Cultural Center, to introduce our troupe. We are in a jam packed studio with the Sansa Polcro flag wavers, and to explain it all, Frank Maselli. Frank, what is happening here today? Okay. Well, listen, we're fortunate to have the Gruppo Spendiatore from San Sepulcro, Italy. Now, back during the 84 World's Fair, my family sponsored the Italian Village. We were fortunate to make contact with these guys and bring them over so that they could perform all during the World's Fair. It was great. Now, they've still, they've continued to come over the last 30 32 years. They're from a town in southern Tuscany named San Sepulcro. It's a thousand years old, was founded when two guys came back from the Crusades in the Holy Land and brought a, a relic of the Holy Sepulcher, and that's what San Sepulcro means, Holy Sepulcher. So then back in the Middle Ages and the Renaissance period, the little towns in Italy were all separate countries, and they would periodically fight. And when they fought, when they would go into battle, the flag standard bearer would lead the army into the uh, battle. And, and on top of the flag would be a spear and it would become a weapon. So when they would practice for these battles, they would practice with the flags, with the spears. And this is a reenactment of them, of that art. These beautiful flags and their costumes are, uh, represent the uh, the symbols and and coat of arms of families from the Renaissance period in Tuscany, um, and uh, you're gonna love this. This is fa uh, fantastic. Now we're in a small studio. They can't do all the flag waving. How high do these flags get during their performances? I'd say as high as thirty feet. <laughs> 30 feet. 30 feet. So, yeah, they could, they're going to do a scaled-down version in here just to give the audience a kind of a, an understanding or a feel of what they do. And they will be performing when? Well, this uh, tomorrow night they will be, in, or Saturday night, they will be in the Italian Marching Club Parade. We've been performing all over town this whole week, 16 performances. You guys have been actually uh, bringing this group down for how long again? 30, 33 years. 
Do you guys like New Orleans? Are, 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 do you like visiting New Orleans? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They all got a big smile on their face. They love the food, and they love Frenchman Street, and they, they love uh, and the Pelicans, the New Orleans Pelicans. So they're going to a game tonight, matter of fact. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time to introduce them. And Frank, will you introduce them in Italian for us? Okay, and again, I, okay, and I'm, and I'm from the American Italian Cultural Center, which sponsors these people. So look us up on our website, AmericanItalianCulturalCenter.com. Okay, I'm proud to introduce the Gruppo Spandiaratore di San Sepolcro. Enough, enough talking, it's time for a performance.
Dance the Polkro flag wavers. Well, once again, they'll be in the Italian Marching Parade. That's tomorrow in the CBD and French Quarter starting at 6 p.m. Visit IAMCNOLA.org to see their route. And New Orleans Magazine quiz queen Julia Street has a question for us. Last time, Dina Riviere told us how many French Quarter restaurants are operated by at least one member of the extended Brennan family and name them. Okay, we counted nine. <laughs> Dickie Brennan's Bourbon House, Dickie Brennan's Steakhouse, The Palace Cafe, Mr. B's, Redfish Grill, Brennan's, Napoleon House, and Dickie Brennan's Tableau. Now, tonight's question. Name two Tennessee Williams plays that are set in New Orleans. Email your answers to steppingout at wys.org. Our prize is a year subscription to Louisiana Life magazine. And tonight we have an apron as worn by WYS production assistant Berg Bischoff with the message, son of a biscotti, <laughs> biscotti, for St. Joseph's Day tomorrow. Uh, and of course, this is from our friends at wearablevegetables.com. You can visit WYS.org for our online calendar to see our lineup of events, including Audubon Zoo's Cool Zoo and Gator Run, along with the Lazy River, they're opening tomorrow, and the St. Joseph's Day altar and celebration at the French Market. That's tomorrow as well with lectures and live music. And also Marcel Dupree's La Chemin de la Croix performed by organist Pierre Quaval and narrated in English by Ron Guidry at St. Louis Cathedral. That's this Sunday. You can link to our WYS YouTube channel to view our program on our homepage. And now, Alan. Well, with the passing of Frank Sinatra Jr. this week, there's been renewed interest yeah. in the person who might have been the most iconic singer of the 20th century. And of course, we're talking about Old Blue Eyes, Frank Sinatra, the chairman of the board. The World War II Museum at the National World War II Museum, I should say, BB Stage Door Canteen, is presenting My Way. Uh, two of the original cast members from three years ago, Courtney Bow and Clint Johnson, are reprising their roles, oiling themselves with seductive charm across the stage. But they're they're joined this time by Adair Watkins and Emily Rose Guyan, who add new dimensions to what would be considered a jukebox musical of Old Blue Eyes and the chairman of the board's uh, music through the years. Keep an eye out for Emily Guyan, who, like Courtney, is a victory bell and positively beams in her performance. The combination of Courtney and Emily on stage is a one-two punch of talent that will have you really enjoying their singing and charismatic stage presence. There's some 40 songs covered over the course of the show, and I would uh, mention everything. I can't get them all in, of course, but, but every Everything is so fantastic. You know, one of the interesting things is the show that I saw this last Sunday featured Ryan Fisher in the audience. Ryan was one of the original members. He is a newly minted second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. He was on hand to be able to see the show go on, and he was enjoying himself as well. This is uh, going to be a great show for people to go out on Easter Sunday. I want to mention they still have lots of seats there. So take mom out, whatever you want to do. Have a good brunch experience there. It includes a glass of complimentary uh, uh, wine as well. My Way continues through May 1st at the World War II Museum. Now, now, following on the success of My Fair Lady and Sister Act, the Jefferson Performing Arts Society is now presenting Mary Poppins at the Jefferson Performing Arts Center on Airline Drive. This time, Micah DeSonier returns as the iconic British nanny, Mary Poppins. She's practically perfect in every way, and she gets that job done with that spoonful of sugar. As Mary Poppins, she has the opportunity to really show off her magnificent voice and dancing skills, which she's done with two other previous roles made famous by Julie Andrews. Of course, Julie Andrews is Eliza in My Fair Lady and Maria in The Sound of Music. Also, an outstanding performance by Bryce Slocum is Bert, who plays the role of the artist and the chimney sweep. Louis DeZosset plays the beleaguered Mr. George Banks, the master of the house on Cherry Tree Lane. And he's uh, joined also as the mistress of the house, Winifred Banks, by Chrissy Bowen. Uh, keep your eyes out also for Miss Andrew, the other British nanny, played by Bethany Fagan, who is the evil nanny that, that actually replaces Mary Poppins for just a short bit. While there were some technical flaws in the production, I did enjoy what I saw for the most part, and particularly when DeSonier is on stage. It's a show for the kids, but bad news, it's almost sold out for Sunday, so uh, go for Saturday night if you can. Also, at the Southern Rep, they've taken the wraps off their contribution to the Tennessee Williams New Orleans Literary Festival. That's a tale of repression and lust with an undercurrent of revenge. It, of course, is based on the earlier Battle of Angels, Orpheus Descending, the play that Tennessee Williams had uh, uh, put out in 1957. Uh, the central focus of the play is on Lady Torrance, played by Irene Glasos and Val Xavier, a guitar-brandishing gambler 
dealer and risk taker who's hired to uh, basically uh, become a stock boy at a dry goods store. Uh, Todd was particularly uh, brilliant. That's Todd Demore uh, playing opposite Glazos, whose realistic portrait of a woman searching for love, who's reluctant to trust anybody, is really outstanding as well. Uh, she has to contend with the condescending attitudes of the local village people, uh, the uh, people who really manifest a hate for blacks, Italians, and anyone who's really upsetting the status quo there. Beth Bartley returns as the bad girl Carol Cotrere, who wants Val for her own. And uh, Glazos is also uh, serving as a producer with Beth uh, in collaboration with the Tennessee Williams New Orleans Literary Festival, the Provincetown Tennessee Williams Theater Festival. And the executive director, Jeff Hall Flavin, is directing this particular production. Also playing David Cotrere is uh, the lover of Lady, uh, uh, actually, it ends up on a bad note, Jim Wright. Their relationship is strained by her dealings with her unscrupulous husband, Jabe Torrance, played menacingly by uh, Carl Palmer. Orpheus Descending, uh, again, as I mentioned, starred in 1957 with Maureen Stapleton and, and Cliff Robertson. It only played for 68 performances. It has a lot fewer to play this time. I really recommend people see it, though. It has a great, excellent cast of supporting players, including Lisa Shattuck, Dorian Rush, Brenda Curran, and Cami West. And we'll find a lot to love there during the Tennessee Williams New Orleans Literary Festival. Next week, I will have the review of Glass Menagerie, which you got to see a little bit of today. Uh, I thought I'd mention a couple things uh, that are being offered theatrically at the Tennessee Williams New Orleans Literary Festival. First of all, Jeremy Lawrence, who has recreated the character of Tennessee Williams on so many times before, is helping to craft and create original music based on the writings and stylings of Tennessee Williams, arranged and performed by Zachary Klaus and Jeremy Lawrence. It's directed by Michael Bush. It's called, believe it or not, he knew he would say it, but could he believe it again? And also, uh, the Tennessee Williams Theater Company, under the direction of Augustin Carrero and Nick Shackelford, will be presenting a series of one acts over at the Metropolitan Community Church, 1600 St. Charles Avenue at Henry Clay. Okay. It's called Weird Tales. All right, thank you so much. And now it's time for our picks. Poppy. New St. Joseph Altar at Avo, the restaurant on Magazine Street. It'll be delicious and beautiful. Uh, Max, new season. Yes, we've got a new season coming up. We're going to open with Pippin, uh, the beloved musical. We're just so excited about it. Good. So go to your website for all the details. Yes, please huh? do. Alan. And just to wrap up, one other thing about Tennessee Williams, the wit and wrath uh, the Life and Times of Dorothy Parker is proclaimed by Claudia Baumgarten. It's going to be on Friday, April the 1st. It's at 11 a.m. at Le Petit Theater. All right, and quickly, my picks, Trinity Episcopal kicks off Bach Around the Clock tonight, celebrating <laughs> Johann Sebastian Bach's 330th birthday, continuing all the way through midnight tomorrow night. Visit TrinityNola.com for details and a schedule of some of the city's most talented performers. And the Borgard Kai's House presents their own St. Joseph's Day celebration and altar that's tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's free and open to the public, and donations will be given to Father Maestri's mission. Visit bkhouse.com for more information on that. And the New Orleans Concert Band will present their mid-spring concert Sunday at 3 p.m. at the UNO Performing Arts Center. That's the recital hall. Visit neworleansconcertband.org to learn more. Don't miss the book signing and celebration on the publication of Don't Start Me Talking, plays of struggle and liberation, the selected place of John O'Neill. That takes place at Ashe Cultural Center Sunday from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Visit ashecac.org for more info on that. And the National World War II Museum will present a screening of the documentary Sweet Georgia Brown, Impact, Courage, Sacrifice, and Will by documentary filmmaker Lawrence Walker. The film focuses on African-American women during World War II. A Q&A with Walker follows the screening and it's free and open to the public. But an RSVP is required to reserve your spot. And the symphony chorus New Orleans presents Box St. John's Passion next Friday at 7 p.m. at St. Mary's Assumption Church on Josephine Street. Visit symphonychorus.org to purchase your tickets. Thank you all very much, thank and thank you, you for so. watching. Good night. <laughs>